Alright. Did you guys come to the last Yes. And, and in fact, I'm going to do kind of a short presentation and there's just a few people. Look at where your house is or whatever. Yeah. All right, Justin, let's give it another minute or two and then we'll I'll just we'll just go with that YouTube. That, uh, we're live. Oh, you're, you're doing, doing it. it? I just got it. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> So yeah. Yeah. Did you did you check it already? I don't know how great the sound is, but what we get. Oh no, I'm not worried about that. We'll, we'll do the best we can. Yeah. It says we're live. Okay. Got someone watching. Let me. Oh well, that's a good. Just because I found out on Facebook. Yeah. Ready? Russ is here. We can start. All right. Yes, there. We don't want to look at that all day. You'd think I'd be used to sharing my screen. Well, welcome everyone. We had a little technical difficulty getting the screen going. Uh, welcome everybody on YouTube. I think we are up to two. Um, <laughs> can we turn off those lights or else turn on these ones? We can. Uh, it, Dan? Yeah. Or maybe it's that panel right there by the door. Okay. We just can't see you. Oh, well, I'm going to sit down, so it's okay. Uh, no, I think I'm going to sit down, so you don't have to look at me anyway. So, welcome to our little meeting tonight. This is just a town hall. Um, we've had a little bit of evolution in um, the development of our school board maps. Um, Iron County uh, surpassed 50,000 uh, residents, 10,000 students. Therefore, we are now to a seven-member board, um, and that and the precinct rebalancing that we did. Um, after the census has really caused a need to really update this map. Um, and so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and sit down and run the computer for a minute and um, you can kind of watch the screen and we'll um, I'll kind of walk you through the process. Um, and, and then when I'm done, I think we'll just open it up. I'm, I don't plan on taking a, a ton of your time tonight, um, but I am willing to stick around as long as we need to for questions. Or I don't see any rotten vegetables, so... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Okay, so first of all, um, every 10 years we have the census, and the census affects our, our precincts. This is Iron County here. I'm going to actually come off of this one. Okay, and those are our old precincts. And there were some fairly significant changes if you kind of make a mental note of that, and then we go to the new precincts. That's what it looks like. So uh, Beth was just asking me how many we added, and it's it's a little tricky to say because there are sub precincts. We took away some, but it's um, about 11 precincts that we added. Um, Cedar City now has quite a few more. Um, the downtown area um, is it looks a bit different. Um, there's uh, more precincts here, especially in these areas that have grown. Um, Fiddler's got split this way. Um, uh, Cedar 10 because of the growth of the school actually shrunk in population and uh, I, I live in Cedar 10 along with uh, board member Brinkerhoff and um, we now that's that now takes in what used to be 10 11 and 12 um, and then um, at the request of a few other folks uh, seven and eight look a little bit different um, nine is elsewhere so we had to um, match the uh, Sorry, I won't do that too much to make you sick, but uh, we had to match the uh, state house boundaries and the state, um, um, yes, thank you. Well, the state Senate is, is in all of Iron County, but the state school board, and, the, and if I switch back, see this purple and yellow boundary here? 
Um, it looks quite a bit different than it used to, and that is because before we followed a nice township line. Now we follow, I think, sheep trails. I'm not sure what they were thinking, but <laughs> that that yellow and purple represents the difference between House 14, uh, sorry, State School Board 14 and, and 15. Mid Valley was much unchanged. Canaryville goes almost all the way to Pinto now. Um, Enoch now has six precincts um, along this. Um, Heroin now has an east uh, because of growth. Uh, so these are, and, and this is all available um, on the map. You can kind of play around. And, and to try and figure out streets, um, the trick is zoom in. And it'll, you can even see individual houses, right? And, and as it draws, it'll tell, it, tell that color. So you can kind of zoom in and out and, and figure out where things are. So if you're like, man, am I in Enoch 6? Well, you can come here and say, well, let's see, which side of Enoch Road am I on? Um, and so that's a little bit on using the, using the map, um, kind of how we got to where we are. Um, we, have, we have quite a few more precincts than we did. Um, they're more balanced. Uh, many of them were over the 1,250 registered voter limit. Um, having got this done, that allowed us to move on to the school board style. And so when we first started looking at it, this was our first attempt. Um, I had received a lot of feedback from, from folks who weren't happy with sharing um, representation between uh, fiddlers and parallel. And so we, we made a big effort to kind of take this whole big part of the county and um, keep it out of some of these more suburban areas. Um, and then we had um, this priest, this district here, which comprised all the unique precincts and um, a new precinct called Three Peaks, um, which I really liked the cohesiveness of that. Um, this was kind of a North Cedar thing made a slight change here and this is kind of the Dogtown East Cedar golf course bit. Um, this one was, you know, center of town and west and then this is parts south and parts west. And it was, I, I, I felt pretty good about it, but I was concerned about this uh, drastic difference in, uh, in uh, population. So in this big eastern portion here, there's only 5,887 uh, population. That's we got that information from the census, and we we actually figured out how many were in each precinct. And so, um, you know, finding the right combination of precincts became the, the thing. But what happened was, with 5887 being the smallest, and here this 9004 being the largest, we had um, a 28 percent spread on population distribution. And um, you know. The, I had shared this with the commissioners, and uh, it had kind of gotten leaked out of the public a little bit. And uh, though most people seemed to like it, um, that concern about population distribution became key. Um, and we, uh, late on last Friday afternoon, uh, we had a, a discovery. Our, our, our county attorney, uh, who's here tonight, um, had found uh, a, a case, um, the Navajo Nation versus San Juan County. And their population wasn't even that distribution wasn't even that stark um, and they were forced to redo their maps so we all kind of went, well these communities of interest that we were trying to preserve are important but they're subjective the objective numbers are this these you know the number of people in each one and truly if you think about it if you live in a, in a precinct or sorry i keep saying precinct a district that is has fewer um, population, then your your vote's going to weight a little bit heavier than one that has one that's less. So given that, we had um, we had a constituent uh, write in, and um, he didn't have the advantage of GIS, but he did kind of run it through Excel, and this was his version of the map. And so he got the numbers a little bit closer. Um, he did, in fact, combine um, some of those folks uh, from parts north with parts south. Um, there was a little bit of a belly button on this one that I didn't care for, but but really it was a better distribution. It gave us about a 14% population distribution. Uh, and then after after kind of finding that case and, and thinking about it, you know, 
I had said sarcastically to one of the commissioners, I said, I could stand at the center of Maine and Cedar City and, and just make a wagon wheel and we can distribute the population. And so I reached out to uh, Kendall Allen, our, our new, newly hired uh, GIS guru, and I said, Kendall, can you run your techno wizardry and see how close you can balance these precincts just, just by the numbers? And um, he's been great to work on through the work with on this process. Commissioner Cousins has spent some time with him. Um, he's, we, we really appreciate him. He really helped with the precinct rebalancing. So I'm going to talk nerd a little bit for a sec. So he he did what's called a, a gradient symbology, but basically precincts that have more voters, he made dark blue, and precincts with less voters, he made all the way to white. So it was this scale of dark blue to light blue to white. And he made seven distributions because we have seven precincts, or districts, excuse me. And, um, and basically by picking the biggest, medium, the next, the next, and the smallest of each one, mathematically it falls out. And so we kind of took the pinwheel um, approach and, uh, and actually came up with this. And, and maybe uh, Sam would like to speak to this, maybe he wouldn't, he's looking at me like he wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but our, our total distribution, well, yeah, this is the third iteration. Um, the, the total population, okay. The total population distribution on this one is eight and a half percent, which is well within kind of that standard set by um, Navajo Nation versus San Juan County um, of 10%. And so we felt pretty good about this. I want to talk about some of the minutiae that ended up kind of dropping out of this. Uh, I'm going to have to get a different line. Um, so first of all, this offends everybody equally. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get that right out there. So for example, when it comes to sharing distribute, uh, uh, representation, Heroin and Paraguna now have to share representation with everyone north of Mid Valley Road here. And if you're stuck on a map, holler, and I'll, and I'll, I'll hop around like I know what I'm doing. But yeah, so this is this is Lund Highway. This is Mid Valley Road, right? That's I-15. That's Minersville Highway Road. Okay, and so so that one, they brought that one clear up to 7912 because there's more people here. And so what you have is this more urban or suburban part of the county sharing with more rural. Same thing with parts east and Bryan Head, right? So basically that goes along Main Street, right? And Fiddler's Canyon Drive up here, the road, and then clear into Bryan Head, right? And then same thing, you have Cedar 16, which is, you know, by the by the fire station on the north, Cedar 25, like Equestrian, out 56, all the way out to like the near, nearly to Pinto, um, and then down, including Canerico. Um, and so everybody, and then uh, same here with this, uh, Bit on the west, it's more of these northern parts and all the way out west. But it, it, it what it gave us is a really good distribution. And the net effect, really, and this is the take home the net effect was that everybody had to share some representation with urban or suburban and rural, right? With, with two except, exceptions, and that's just because cedar's so much bigger. We have these two small ones that are right in the middle of town, and they're just population, we just don't have, we're not big enough to get around that. But with the exception of those two, everyone else has to share kind of their urban rural mix. And so I figure if everybody goes home unhappy, I've done a good job. I don't know if that's true. John, <laughs> yes, a question. Just at the end, so I'm trying to find out the streets. <laughs> where, where do you want me to zoom to? Um, so the dark gold in the center, is that left? Is that Cove Drive? Yeah, so this okay. is Cove Drive. This is Lake of the Hills. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah the temple's right. So. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes. Oh, down. I'm sorry. That's uh, that's Cross Hollow Road. Sorry. Oh, Cross yeah. Hollow. And so, okay. And then, so here's Lake of the Hills. Um, that's really kind of hard to see those with the dark. Oh, okay. There's Cove Drive. Okay, that makes more sense. Right. Okay. Yeah. And and so that that one in the white precinct will actually go across I fifteen now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and we we had really tried to not do that in the earlier versions, um, but because out of an abundance of caution, you know, sometimes we we let things drive us. Um, but this actually brought us to a good place, which is that 
our, our distribution is, is so much smaller. And if you think about, you know, that northeast part of Lay Hill versus downtown with the university and stuff, that's really not that different uh, community of interest um, than, than, you know, some, some of these others. And so it, it, I don't love it, but I think this might be the best product that we are able to produce. Um, and so with that, I am done. Um, what questions does everyone have? John, the school boundaries, the existing school boundaries, do they enter into this at all? I mean, some, some district or some representatives would have three or four schools. <laughs> Others may only have one or two. Yeah, so, so the answer is no. Okay. Um, and let's go to the law that talks about that. So when it comes to setting these up, it says the county and municipal legislative bodies shall divide the school districts so that the local school board districts are substantially equal in population and are as contiguous and compact as practicable. And practicable is an interesting word. We, we thought maybe it gave us some more wiggle room and we decided ultimately that it did not. Um, and so number of schools, no. Number of students, no. Uh, it's it's Each representative may have two schools, some may have yeah. four or five schools. And and as far as the school boundary. You know, and that's an interesting discussion because um, I, I had several people bring this up to me. It's like, well, how many schools are in each one? Listen, that's not part of my calculus because that's not what the law says. So it's it's substantially equal in population and are as contiguous and compact as practice. So the weight on one representative may be fairly heavy, where another one may only have one or two schools and you know that's a fair she point. has to worry about if you uh, if you go to um, so like um, this particular one here this big uh, light brown one or whatever tan one there aren't a lot of schools in that I mean it's north I guess it's gonna have it'll have Enoch Elementary and, and, and Three Peaks and Burrow and that's it whereas you know you get more down in here, and there's three elementary schools and a high school, you know. So, yeah, that really wasn't part of the calculus. So, John, there's a point to be brought here, though. Uh, Dale, I was hoping you'd make this point. <laughs> here, speak. It's, a, it's necessary, of course, to have this sort of a thing drawn up and divided out. But once the election's over, and the votes are counted, that as far as I'm concerned, there isn't any any distinction between a board member from Timbuktu, Timbuktu, or out to Pearl. We all ought to be Iron County board members with equal representation looking out for the whole county. So as far as I'm concerned, the election is just to make sure geographically the whole county is covered. But after that, we ought to be all on the same page. I have to say, as 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 someone in your district with school age children, I appreciate that. Did you have a comment? Oh yeah, you were yeah, agreeing I with. I never <laughs> had him heard him not have something to say. So that was <laughs> um, any other questions or comments about the process or kind of how we got to where we are? I just I, I like this proposal number three over the other two because I was looking at the other two in it both of one and two broke up our precinct of Cross Hollow so it literally split a small neighborhood into half which I think a neighborhood should stay within the same yeah. John yes sir I really like this as well did we make sure that this doesn't put two current board members in the same district so that they don't Right yes. The same one. So the question is, did we did we um, avoid putting existing board members in the same di district? And the answer is no. Uh, so I can just about point to all of them. So Michelle lives in this one. Dale lives in this one. Um, of course, Ben lives in the one up north, and um, currently Dave lives in the one uh, closer to Enoch, which goes to. Uh, yes, the right. okay. yes, yes. So they're all in different districts on this. Okay. Yeah, that was actually a lot easier to accomplish than these other parts. Jeff Jeff lives in the white one. Oh, Jeff, no, no, Jeff lives in the Yes, sorry. <laughs> in the brown one. And then uh, and then Dale lives in this white one. Michelle lives in the mustard color one. Um, and then 
Dave lives in this, uh, I'm out of, I run out of brown, burnt sienna one. Um, <laughs> and Ben lives in, that's a thing. Hey, you know, the 64 <laughs> crayons paid off. Thanks. Um, the, and then Ben lives in the purple one. So. So which two? How did we get purple with all the brown? So which two don't have Oh, which two are new? Yes, which two yes. Are new? yes, 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 yes. Great question. All right, Green. process of elimination. Green. All right, so this one here. So this is like Fiddlers and um, kind of East Enoch. That one is unrepresented currently. And yep, that brown one there. And I, I had given them names for, log, for my own sanity's sake. And I, I kind of wanted to take off the geographical tags off of them. We'll, we'll give them numbers before I present to the commission. So, yeah. So that one is unrepresented. So that's that's kind of west of I-15, out 56, and then south. So like, you know, up by Quichpa, and then including Canara. So who goes out to like Newcastle and Burrow? Currently, that'll be Dave. Okay. But but remember, they're still governed by the existing ones, which look like. Yeah, until November or January. Right. Yeah. Which looked like this. Right. Because that, I think that was Dave, that Jeff went out there. I know he went out there. Yeah. 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 And, and in fact, Jeff's is really weird because it goes clear yeah. down and around. Yeah. And that's actually worth noting that what we've got now is as far as a product, as far as representation. I mean, my criteria was to represent the kids first and the parents. And, and mm -hmm. also then the, the board members trying to represent an area. And this was a little weird because you had to share fiddlers with, with peril and you had to go from East Cedar all the way to the Nevada border. So we've tried to clean some of that up and, and, and truly having more population gives us more flexibility to do that. Hey, any other questions? When will this be decided? Uh, it will, so, um, we might continue to tweak it a little bit, but so far we really kind of like this third one. Um, uh, and so it'll go before the commissioners on February 14th. And if it's approved then, it'll be it'll be what the basis for those districts um, moving forward, which will help the filing period uh, for all of the offices are, is from March 7th to the 11th. Um, and, and hopefully that'll give someone, that's been kind of my angst is to have someone who might want to run enough time to figure out, hey, I'm in a, what precinct I'm in, what district I'm in, and, and, and can I or should I run? You know, am I gonna be opposed or not? Those kind of things. So this this normally would happen in November, but we were kind of set back from the lateness of the census. So, any so other questions? Can you blow it up again so yes. you can see street better? And can I can we walk up? Because I can't see from back to front. Do I think. And John, I want I want to just make a quick point. This sure. was this was totally Drawn. Um, I don't think any one of us commissioners had any input on this map. I mean, your your GS, GIS guy put it put it together, and this is what we ended up with. <laughs> I mean, I, I really like it based on what he came up with. So, I mean, I looked at it with him after the he, he came up with this. Yeah. With the and we are lucky to have him. He's really talented. I mean, the way he uses that software and put it together, just just so people know that. We didn't sit there and they didn't draw this line here. He he came up with this line on his own. Right. Or is there a place where you can post this that we can so go blow it up? Yeah, it's on it's on the internet. And so if you go to ironcounty.net and I don't know why, but you scroll to recorder and go to GIS maps. Here I'll do it. I'll walk through it. Because that because some of them were out on the internet when you first did it, you could blow it up and see the street. Yeah, so yeah, no, the, the trick is is to zoom in. And it's 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 always been that way. So once you get here on the on the page, you go, there's a couple ways, but just go to recorder, GIS maps, right? And then down here it'll say um, Iron County voting boundaries. These are all the other GIS um, products that that, uh, that 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 we maintain. Um, but yeah, you click right there and it opens up this window. I'm not gonna do it again because I'm and taxing this poor computer already, but this it opens up to this, and you can you can do lots of things. So so the main thing here is zooming in on the closer you get, the more detail you get. 
Um, you can even, I mean, if you want, you can turn on um, satellite stuff, all kinds of things. Um, but uh, I do want to echo what Commissioner Cousins said. I, I feel strongly about a few things, one of which is gerrymandering. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that in terms of gerrymandering, there was none on this. First of all, I wouldn't have allowed it, but there was no impropriety of any kind. I was grateful to have input from some concerned citizens. We did have some board members reach out to me, um, but not about their precinct or whatever. It was it was um, just, you know, they were concerned about those balance numbers. Um, the commissioners have been um, have been involved, but they haven't been directing the process. And if you, and if you want to blame anyone, you blame me if, if you don't like the map. Uh, I, I will agree, uh, Kendall Allen is our new GIS guy. We, we poached him from... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Paiute. Paiute County, and uh, and uh, <laughs> yes, and and uh, he has been great. This has been it's been a fun process, I think, for him. And um, like I say, I don't use the word techno wizardry very much, but being able to balance those numbers using the uh, gradient fill was really a cool technique to basically take smallest to biggest precinct touch all the colors in, in order of the rainbow, and lo, lo, lo and behold, there you have balanced numbers all the way around. It was it was really cool. Uh, Dale and then Jim. So, good point to follow up on Paul's comment. I want to make sure people understand that the board was not active in this distribution plan either, but it was done by uh, by you and others. In You're going to string somebody up, office. string me up. So, uh, we <laughs> don't want to be claimed. We don't want to be tarred with I'm sure you the districts either. Right. Jim. Uh, as a voter, I'm impressed with how close you got those numbers. Because in districts past, I think some of these smaller districts, <clears throat> Burrow, Bryan Head, sometimes felt they didn't have any representation because they couldn't compete with those two or three big districts that lie within Cedar City. And to me, those numbers are important because now they can say I'm equal. I have I have just as much pull with the school board as somebody that lives lives in Cedar City, and I think that's important for these rural people to take ownership of of their education of their students because their students are just as important. A student in Burrow is just as important as somebody that goes to the South Elementary. Absolutely. Well, and just to reiterate. Here, here. Uh, just reiterate, John will follow precinct line yeah, yeah. boundaries. So I was going to ask that. So this doesn't yeah. cut any precincts in half. Those so that's a great question. So first of all, it can't. That's why this map happened after the precincts, because I can't report on half a precinct at an election. Does that make sense? So when we do precinct level reporting on, on the, the statement of votes cast, it's got to go by precinct, which is part of the challenge. If I could just start arbitrary drawing lines, I could have gotten the numbers a lot closer. So. But I had to do, we have to establish the precincts first, and then this follows, which is also why this is so late in the process, frustratingly late. And I just echo what Jim said. I just think it's, it's great. If, if you could call those neighborhoods, that would be even better. Yeah. Because people take ownership of something that's, that's near and dear to them. A neighborhood is about as near and dear as you can get in this city. If you have a, if I'm a member of a certain neighborhood or a certain district, then I'll take ownership of that bit of land. Really? Well, I think that was my concern, but I think the proposal too had where it was cutting the um, precinct, but every neighborhood with, is within the same precinct. Yeah, currently. as much as possible. I, and I'm sure we'll we'll end up splitting some, but but part of that was how it, setting setting up the precincts helps a lot with that. So. Uh, yes. Uh, so if this has all of your numbers within eight and a half percent, um, some of these areas are going to have a lot more growth than others, obviously. How big can that number get as they change before we're required to redo the map? Good, Good question. Um, the answer is there's not a number. That that code that I read you is the code. Yeah. That lawsuit. The, the, lo the lawsuit kind of set an arbitrary number, right? And so we're like, listen, we want to be within you know, Navajo Nation versus San Juan County to keep ourselves, you know, out of a sling. But it says as practicable. 
I mean, the smaller the county gets, the harder that spread's going to be to 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 even out. So, but it's not set. You know, at ten percent or twelve percent, no. you have to redo it. So we can make this right. last for a until we want. Yes. Also, every, every ten years, we have to. Every ten years. Okay. Well, right? You, you know, you, you, but but it's it's good to redo precincts every ten years, and therefore, if you do re redo precincts, you got to redo this map. Um, that being said, nothing precludes us from doing it again next year. If you know, there's there's a couple of big proposed developments. Maybe that throws our numbers off. And, um, let's be frank. There's more than a couple. <laughs> so so uh, before every wrestling match, I would get nervous and I would get caught. Off. And the the only cure was bonking a guy on the head a couple of times. And I have severe cotton mouth right now. So. <laughs> I'm wondering, are, do we have any other questions or comments? You've been quiet. <laughs> I have complete confidence. Good. Uh, anything else, Mr. Blake? Uh, I just want to echo what the other commissioners have said. This is something that I mean, we all we all have kids. We're all really concerned about the community, and it's it's been really cool to watch this process. Uh, without Thank you. us trying to direct it or we understand that this is a community process. It's been really cool to watch. You know, we, we kind of thought that we had it tweaked to, you know, to a good spot. And then our attorney said, oh, here's some case law that might get you in trouble. And I mean, I don't see how we get it any better or any closer than this. As it is, I, you know, I want to give our DIS department a, a huge round of applause. Just, I mean, they've been awesome. John has worked tireless hours. Uh, it, it, it's been really, I, I really appreciated the process because in every conversation that we've had, John has always said kids first, parents second, you know, convenience down the road. But it, the, the focus has always been the kids in every conversation that's been had. So it's, it's just been a cool process to watch play out, uh, and especially with all the community input that we've had. It's been awesome. Thank you for your kind words. I, I, Mr. Wood. I guess I'll speak too. <laughs> um, I just want to thank John because I know that he has got had some big artwork on the day. <laughs> and it's been, it's been quite a process. It really has. And, and we like, Mike said, we thought that it was getting pretty close to what we needed. And then, and then of course, you know, the numbers, the numbers were, we had a couple of uh, people that, um, from the community that was concerned about those numbers also. And, and we're like, well, we'll go back to the drawing board. So, you know, it, it really has been quite a process. And, and I just wanted to thank John too. Our GIS guy has been good, but I know he's, just work and work and work. So thanks, John. Yeah, and, and it's been fun to work with him. It's it's a good process to be a part of. Um, ultimately, um, as the law says, um, the, the legislative body, being the county commission, will make the ultimate choice and um, get away from the feedback. Um, and uh, but but my objective is to get a good and fair map in front of them. Uh, one of the one of the consequences from that lawsuit in San Juan County was not only did they say you have to redo the map, they said we're not even going to trust you to do it. And they had some third party do it, mm -hmm. and so we would much rather be in control of our own destiny and, and avoid those problems if we can. So uh, I, I'm I'm appreciative of, of the commissioner's support on this process. Any other questions before we wrap it up? All right, thank you. Could, could this be used oh. as uh, a guide to where build where to build future schools? No. You don't need a microphone. You've got a, you've got a big booming voice. I was in the army. Yeah. If I was on a 747, I could hear you at the back of the plane if you were on. Yeah, no, this, again, the criteria is this. And I will say, I'm in my eighth year as clerk. Um, and this is the first time I've gone through this process. But I will say, having done it gives me the confidence to say we did have some growth or there was some pressing need uh, to be able to rebalance those precincts a little more often. And to, and to redo this map. Um, I really thought the process was more onerous than it really was. And so I mean, as we've gotten into it, it's, it's given me the confidence that, you know, if we have a pressing need, we can, we can revisit it. But for now, I'm feeling pretty good, just personally, 
about this product to put before the commissioners, um, but I am always trying to seek input. If we've over, you know, if we've overlooked something, I want to hear about it. So, um, how many people are we up to there, Justin? We have three. <laughs> so, all three of you, if you have a question or comment, it's clerk.group at ironcounty.net um, and, uh, and send them in. Uh, we're also eagerly seeking comments for uh, this uh, correctional facility meeting that we'll have on February 8th. So, and that'll be at the Harry Potter room in the, the Great Hall on the campus. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.